In this video, we're going to have a look at the vector, also known as the cross product between two vectors. So first thing, what is the vector or cross product? So let's say we've got a vector, x1, y1, z1, and we want to cross that with x2, y2, z2. So rather than give you a formula for this, I think it's much easier if I give you a process to follow. I think it's best to do the cross product is to first of all, cover up the first row. And what we're going to do, we're going to find the determinant of the remaining entries of the 2x2 two two matrix. So the determinant of y1, z1, y2, z2 is y1, z2, take z1, y2. So that's the first entry. Then cover up the middle. But the middle, we're going to do exactly the same as so the calculation that we perform, except we're going to make the answer negative. So cover up the middle row, make the answer negative, and find the determinant of the remaining 2 by 2 matrix. So that's x1, z2, take z1, x2. Remember that's made negative. That's the most common place that students fall over. And then cover up the third and find the determinant of the remaining 2 by 2 matrix. So x1, y2, take y1, x2. And that's the vector or cross product. And the reason it's called the vector product is because we get a vector as an answer. Previously, when we did the scalar product, we got a scalar, a number as an answer. Here, we get a vector as an answer. So let's have a look at what that actually means, what that actually finds us. So let's imagine this flat surface here. So let's say it's a floor, someone's standing on it. There we go. So it's a flat floor. So I'm going to call this vector A and this one here vector B. So what I'm imagining is vector A, the red vector, running along the surface of the floor doesn't go above the floor, doesn't go above, below it, it just simply stays on the surface. Vector B, again, running along the surface of the floor, so both those vectors are lying flat on the floor. What the vector product finds us is a vector that's perpendicular to both of them, i.e. the vector that makes a right angle with both of them, so it comes directly out of the surface here. So what we've got is we've got a right angle here, between the pink and the red, and we've got a right angle here between the pink and the green. So it's the vector that's perpendicular to both of them. Or a different way of thinking about it, it's the vector perpendicular to the plane that contains both of them. So let's have a look at an exam question. A bit of a warning is in this question, the challenge is deciding when it's appropriate to use the vector product, when it's appropriate to use a scalar product, or when it's appropriate to use neither. So let's do part one. So find the value of k such that 1, 2, 1 and minus 2, 3, k are perpendicular. It's only worth two marks. In this case, we've been through in our previous video using the scalar product. It's more appropriate to use the scalar product because the scalar product of two perpendicular vectors is equal to zero. So if we do that, 1, 2, 1 dot minus 2, 3, k equals zero because the perpendicular which means that minus two plus six plus k equals zero which means that k equals minus four so that's part one done part two two lines have those equations there find the point of intersection of line one and line two well, actually, it's not really necessary here to prove that they intersect like we had done in a previous video, i.e. going through the showing they're not parallel, showing that they're, um, that they're not skew, etc. Because it's told us that they intersect, the question implies that they intersect. So all we need to do is find the value of lambda on u for which they intersect. Then we can find the point. So 
part two. Let's do equations for x, y, and z. So x is 3 plus lambda equals 6 plus 2 mu. And y is 2 minus lambda equals 5 plus mu. And actually, I'm not going to bother writing the z equation because I know they intersect. There's no need to check a third equation. So let's just write this in a format where I can put it straight in the calculator. So lambda take 2 mu equals 3. And I've got minus lambda minus mu also equals 3. So straight in the calculator with that. Let's put that across there. So menu, equation solver. It's a simultaneous equation with two unknowns. So 1 lambda minus 2 mu is 3, minus lambda minus mu is also 3. So I get that lambda equals minus 1, and mu equals minus 2. So let's just pick one of those, let's just choose the easiest. Therefore, r equals, and let's put lambda in there, 3, 2, 7, minus 1 lot of 1, minus 1, 3, equals, okay, so 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 minus minus 1 is 3, and 7 minus 3 is 4, to so the point at which they intersect is 2, 3, 4. And again, there's no need to check the Z coordinate, uh, the equation for Z, because it's already told us that the lines intersect. We don't need to prove that they intersect for the third part. So it tells us that the vector 1AB is perpendicular to those lines L1 and L2. Find the values of A and B. Well, again, we're talking about the angle between two vectors, between two vector lines. So the only thing that's relevant is their direction. It's the direction that dictates the angle between two vectors. So it's 1 minus 1, 3. So part 3, let A equal 1 minus 1, 3. And B is 2, 1 minus 1. And we're told that's perpendicular to 1 A B so just to remind 1 A B is the vector that's perpendicular to so we get the cross product between these two vectors we get a perpendicular vector which has to be parallel to this one so let's do it let's find the vector product so A cross B equals so 1 minus 1 3 cross 2, 1, minus 1. And now let's cover up the first entry. So let's find the determinant of the remaining entries. So we've got minus 1 times minus 1, which is 1. Take 3. Actually, I'll not close the bracket yet because I might need more room. So then, take this, cover up the middle entry. But remember, we're going to have to negate this. So whatever the answer is, we're going to make it negative. So then 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. Minus 6. And then cover up the last one. Back to being positive again. So 1 minus minus 2. Equals. So we've got 2. Or minus 2 rather. Then minus 1 minus 6 is minus 7. Make that negative makes 7. And 1 minus minus 2 is 3. So that's parallel to 1AB. So it must be equal to some multiple of 1AB. Well for this to work, K has to be minus 2. So minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. 
So, equals minus 2, minus 2a, minus 2b. And we're ready now to find out what a and b are, because we know that minus 2a must equal the middle entry, so minus 2a must equal 7, which means that a equals negative 7 over 2. And we know that minus 2b must equal 3, which means that b equals minus 3 over 2. And again, make your answers prominent. Put a box around them. Make sure the marker knows to give you the marks for that. But just a bit of a thought here, actually. So if we're going to use the calculator to check our answer, we can do the vector product on the calculator as well. So menu, go into vector mode. And we're going to define vector A as a 3D vector, which was 1, minus 1, 3. Operation, let's define another vector. Vector B, 3-dimensional which is 2, 1, minus 1. So now press an operation, and we're going to do a vector calculation. So operation, vector A, and the cross symbol is just the times button. Cross, operation, vector B, equals, and there's the vector product of the two, minus 2, 7, 3, which is exactly what we got. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.